Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Class, and this evening I'm chatting to an absolutely amazing writer, author, poet, senior analyst. The list is endless. He literally does a little bit of everything. And that is no other than Bukang Marajelo, the poet, the author, absolutely spectacular human being. If you have read any of his work, you need to do that right now. Good evening, Bukang. How are you? I'm good in you. I'm well. Thank you so much for taking the time, giving us a tour. We got a tour of this home. Bukang is a recently, you, you're a new first time home buyer. You've yeah. been here for, you said about six months? Yeah, I've been here for six months. So it's very new. How's that yeah. been? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, it, it's been a, um, it's been an amazing um, experience. Um, I've lived in a few places um, around Joburg and moving in this space where it's more quiet, you know, um, it's a huge space and most of the time I'm spending it alone, you know, mm. um, um, it, it's, it's been, yeah. Like and I of said, course, it's been amazing. Yeah, yeah, and of course the quiet, the quiet uh, serenity yeah, helps yeah, with yeah. writing. Mm. These it, amazing it, it, it poems does, that you it, do. It does, you know. Um, yeah. You can get, I get to unwind at the end of the mm. day with a glass of wine upstairs um, mm. on the balcony and just reflect on the day and just write and create art. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure getting to where you are right now wasn't easy, right? Yeah. And I mean, in your, throughout your poetry, you speak of, and it's, I just resonate with all of your poems. Like I see what yeah. you're saying and I'm like, wow, I've, the, there's been a day in my life where I felt like this, where, you know, I saw someone like this and felt that, just that, that, that energy, you write, your, your writing is powerful. And I, I just actually, sometimes I actually read it and I cry, especially like on your Twitter. And I also read the little snippets that you sent me, absolutely amazing, which we're going to share shortly. But before we get there, yeah. uh, you also own two startup companies. Yeah. Right? So I, like I, I, I said, a little bit of everything. Yeah, um, I own a, what you call a vanity publishing company um, where we help other um, upcoming writers, you know, in their uh, publishing journey. Um, I also own, um, I part own a PR company which focuses mainly on writers. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of here and there. Yeah. yeah, and just last night I was actually listening to a podcast about uh, someone asked a very popular um, motivational speaker and entrepreneur and property investor, they asked him, they were like, do you believe that every time you start a company or do you believe that every time you make a little bit of money, you have to give back to the community? Um, for me, it, it's not even about um, making a little bit, you know, sometimes I intentionally create mm -hmm. projects where they will generate something so that I can take that money and you know, um, give it to another artist for their projects, you know. Um, I, I believe a lot in building up um, a community of what you are doing in different industries, you yeah. know. Um, so whenever I have the means, um, that's why I started um, my venture publishing company, you know, so that we can give back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe a lot that once you have space and you are in that space, you know, it's important for you to open up the door and allow what I see. I, I, yeah, and he was also talking about just the mere fact that we exist, we have to give back, or we should be giving back. It shouldn't even be a question. Yeah. And I totally resonated with that. So, Bukang, you started poetry way back when in high school, right? Yeah. What, what inspired you? I mean, high school, people worried about very different things. People very weren't writing, nor were they reading, actually. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, what inspired you? Um, um, I, I, I have to uh, credit my English teacher, um, Mr. Mulete, um, who, you know, he was very passionate about poetry and mm -hmm. when we did poetry in high school, I know that a lot of people hate it, but like for us and the way he just presented, it was with so much um, vigor and passion mm -hmm. in that it, it sparked that thing in me. Um, I've always loved writing, but, um, you know, when we got introduced to the poetry in, in his classes, mm. it was different. It was, it was a, I just know I just need to write. Right. Yeah. And because you spoke a lot about, I've already explained um, what your writing does for me, how it makes me feel. Yeah. What is your intention when you write? Does every poem have a different intention or is there one main? Um, there's, I think there's not one main intention, but like with most of my writing, um, it, it's a way to say, 
I feel what you're feeling, you know, um, because um, especially in this time, in this COVID time, we have, we've been so isolated, you know, you think that what you're feeling, you're the only person who's feeling that. Yeah. Where, when I write, um, I write to say, this is how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that if I put it out there, someone else will reach out and say, I feel, I feel the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I resonate with you, and yeah. and that's exactly what mm -hmm. I said. How your poems make me feel. Ha, do you? Would you say that your writing has changed from high school to now? Obviously, it, it, it has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in in high school it was very unstructured. It was free. It, mm -hmm. it was purposeless. You mm -hmm. know, it, it was it was just to boost my skill of writing. Okay. Now it it is it, it has changed into a let's talk. You know. Um, let's address these issues that we have faced. Mm -hmm. um, I, I talk about mental health, I talk about trauma, I talk about love and relationships, yeah. you know, I talk about loneliness, where um, it, it's what we young adults are going through, you know. Mm -hmm. And also the most amazing thing that I've taken, it's, I've seen that it, it also reaches out to the older generation, which I did not think it would reach out to. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's been an, um, an awakening for me, you know, mm. I, I thought I was writing for specific people for a specific time, but it, it's it's showing that um, everyone can just pick up their book and right and relate. understand and resonate. Mm. Doesn't need to be with everything, but it there doesn't. is one poem is going to speak to you. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. So you say you want to start this conversation, you want to start dialogue around mental health, around loneliness, around love. Mm -hmm. Have you seen? Or have you heard or seen on Twitter, wherever your platforms may be, have you seen the conversation actually start and come alive? I have seen the conversations come alive. Mm -hmm. um, I've been invited to book clubs, you know. Um, I've, I've seen people having discussions separate away from me about, about my work, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, it was, it was, it, it was a, also another awakening to say, you know, what you're doing, it's actually quite important. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and you know, one of my biggest questions, because you're juggling, you're not juggling a lot, but you, you, you've got a lot going on for you right now, yeah. right? S senior analyst, um, poet, writer, and still managing two companies, right? Yeah. And I've always asked myself, because I'm going to bring it back to owning a home, which is so important. And what does it mean for Bokang to own a home? Yeah. Um, Especially uh, now, mm -hmm. with everything, with, with um, the pandemic and stuff, um, I, I felt that I needed a place where um, I can be free, I can move around. You know, we are, we are so restricted from movement now. Exactly. And I needed a space where I can breathe. Um, also, I needed something because I, I, I feel like in, in my companies, in my writing, um, in my IT, you know, mm -hmm. I, I always, someone or something always has an ownership, part ownership of it. Yeah. In it. I knew that something that, that's just mine mm -hmm. and I can just, at the end of the day, when I put everything away, you know, mm -hmm. come back to it and yeah. find peace in it. You've also very intentional about only sharing your poetry or mainly your poetry on social media or wherever it may yeah. be um, instead of sharing things about your you know your job what you do for a living yeah. um, why is that why do you only share the poetry and not like oh today I had a bad day at work <laughs> I, I actually I'm, I'm actually that person um, <laughs> every Monday um, I, I think around 9 um, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, okay, everyone, we've done enough. On a Monday, <laughs> let's take a rest. The week it's done. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm that person. In, in mm. it, I think that's why people also relate to me in that um, it's not only sharing poetry, it's, it's only um, giving people insight into my life, you know, mm. into my everyday life. Um, I don't share what I do specifically, right. but, you know, I, I get to share what I'm going through. Um, um, throughout the day, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that um, yesterday I had a, um, a tweet where, where I was saying, you know, adulting, it's, it's so difficult yeah. and it, it reaches you out <laughs> while you're still in, in a meeting yeah. and you get a question, a management question mm -hmm. and you're like, 
is this question directed to me? <laughs> and you, you remember your job title <laughs> then and there. Yeah, and yeah. It, 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 um, it's things like that, you know, mm-hmm. um, in, a, in, in throughout the day, I, I would share how my day is going. Right. You know, um, um, I share a lot about wine. Um, I have a partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, with a brand, um, Sibella Wines, mm-hmm. where you know I, I talk about wine, I, I talk about um, poetry, I, I mm-hmm. talk about IT. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm also I think a Twitter, a Twitter troll. You know, I, I joke around a lot. You and do, then, you you do indeed. I've seen, and I wanted to talk a little bit because you're reading, like you said, it's amazing that it's reached the older generation and also started a discussion amongst the elderly mm-hmm. um, and I resonate so much with that because of my, my thesis that I did recently was how I can bridge that gap between the youth and the elderly, right? Mm-hmm. And your poetry is a way of doing that. Mine was just theater. And I think it's so important to hear what the older generation has to say because mm-hmm. in most cases we leave home and we're just like everything our parents or grandmothers have taught us, they, we only realize these lessons now. Like, mm-hmm reaching 30 like oh my mom was round you know yeah. so it's so amazing that they can still talk to or resonate with you and on that note you talk a lot about how self-reflection comes mm-hmm. into your into your work and into your poetry and you of course do a lot of that in order to write about it you need to live it right i'm all mm-hmm. for experiential learning you talk about um oh yes so of course you also need to self-reflect in order to write about self-reflection but do you write with the intention that the reader is going to un- always understand you um i i believe that um in my writing um write for myself um first mm. and also be honest um I, I i advocate about honesty in my work i i think when i'm honest with myself I enable the other person to relate and be honest with themselves. And I, I think from for me it, it comes from there. You know. Mm. It's it's not about I'm writing for, for you. The writer, yeah. it, it's me just being honest right. in my work. Yeah. Which is another powerful thing. And just behind you you have all these awards. Yeah. And we wanna talk a little bit about that, you know, because you're not yeah. just writing for yourself, you're a published uh, yeah. poet. You yeah. you've got these awards. So let's talk a little bit about the awards behind you and how did it not even how did it feel when receiving this because I'm sure um, in the moment you were ecstatic and it was amazing yeah. but did you know that you'd be getting this award like on the night like the feeling I didn't um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't um, mm-hmm. when I got um, the, the first one in mm. 2018 for my IT career you know um, I was still like, like, like I've always said, you know, um, I, I was still new in the career. Just that in everything that I do, um, yeah. I'm always overly dedicated. And um, I've been blessed to work for an amazing company that recognizes um, my think? work mm-hmm. and um, they are big on rewarding that. And um, on, on the night, you know, I was just, I felt privileged to even be acknowledged. Mm. And um, for a huge international um, IT company to, to say, you know, um, throughout the year you've been on fire and you are our, our employee of the year, it, it was, yeah, I, I was taken aback. Mm. And, and uh, um, but like, you know, you, you get to have that moment to say, mm. um, it, it took a lot to get here. Yeah. Um, it, it, it wasn't just an overnight success. You Again, know. reflecting. Yeah. yeah. Because then you also, you know, when other people realize your worth, you need to realize your worth before yeah. others do. I mean, the award was just the cherry on the top. Yeah. Um, and then on this note of privilege, I want to talk about this because I too am a creator, creative, sorry, and in the industry of whether it's film, writing, especially within South Africa. Mm-hmm. Do you think if you were only a writer or only a published poet that you could have had the privilege to sit in your own home? I don't know. Um, I, I, I and mean, I'll, I'll be honest, in, in that, um, it's, as an artist, um, it's hard to navigate in the industry, especially um, for someone like me, um, I'm totally independent. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I, we are not creating the revenues that um, 
what we see on TV as, as a artist, as, as a successful artist, yeah. um, it's, it's portrayed, you know, you, you get to be there, you are a writer now, um, you're mm. a published author, mm. um, but like the rewards are not coming as you for the wood, exactly. you know, and, and you also have to navigate spaces, you know, you are finding people who are already there, who already own this space, mm. who you cannot just come in and... and exactly. Yeah. Because people are already there, and it's so, especially in South Africa, it's so difficult for us yeah. to even try and make that first step when you... And it's just, I think the money is not enough in the entertainment it, it, industry it, it's not, within South Africa. Yeah. So, and that's a sad truth. I mean, I always ask my friends, because all of them are creatives, and I mean, not a lot can say that they've bought this property, that they, that they have something yeah. of an investment like this. Because, and I hate the term struggling artist. I hate that term so much. I think we need to rebuke it from yeah. our vocab. Because the more we say it, the more we're manifesting it. Change, change your lingo, you know. Talk yeah. about you achieving and manifesting these great things. Because I do think it's possible. I just think we're going to take a little bit longer. It, it's going to take time. Um, because also, it, it's, it's not... Um, about struggling artists and stuff like it. Um, readers too. Mm. Um, our audience are also struggling. Mm. In that, um, if the audience, if the reader does not have the funds to buy your book, book. Um, it means that you cannot sell. It means that you cannot create the revenue. Mm. You know. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, people are finding more ways to be creative. Finding more ways to make a living. And um, like I said, you know. As we build communities too, as me as an artist, I open up space for another person. It also allows a little revenue to come into that person's space, exactly. where it also gets to come back to me. Mm. Yeah. And also hopeful at the fact that artists are not limiting themselves to one specific craft. Yeah. You know, we creatives, we can, and it's about trying to do these things. I'm sure when you started up your company, you didn't think, oh, I could be a business owner. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once you're in it, you're like, I can do this. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, you, you get there. Exactly. Yeah. I want to I wanna move to owning a home, right? Because yeah. this journey is, of course, not an easy one. Coming in here, listening to the conversation, talking about all these hidden costs that just hit you in the face. But just before we get there, I want to talk a lot about the a straving stra strategy, which I always ask my guests because I've noticed that each guest saves differently they all have their own individual mechanisms so let's talk about the build up to owning this home yeah. right what was your mechanism your saving strategy so we just spoke about a saving strategy and of course when you are making such a big investment certain lifestyle changes need to take place what yeah. is it that Bukang changed or did to make this goal a reality um so for me um i i've been um with my banker for a while mm -hmm. in that um even way before i even thought of um wanting to own a house you know um it was just one of those things where um let me um be educated financially by someone who's a professional and very on in my career you know i established a relationship with my banker who has been um my helping hand throughout everything where, you know, she advised on um, building a good credit um, score, yes. you know, um, savings um, plans, you know, what's available for me at the bank, you know, like your tax-free um, accounts. Um, also, you know, um, my financial advisor with um, different investment portfolio that I can create in order to save up some little money. Um, I knew that for me it, it was I'm saving up for something big mm -hmm. for later in life, exactly. but it was not um, specifically to say I'm saving up for for a home. Okay. You know, I was just saving and also you know creating um, revenues and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, to support my business also. Um, so yeah, for me it, it was just a natural that's saving um lifestyle mm -hmm. um but also you know when you grow in your career um you your lifestyle also changes you know um there's little more money here and there you know um this little salary increase here and there yeah and and like your lifestyle changes you know um 
you go to more fancier restaurants and exactly. stuff like that. <laughs> and now you are faced with this huge um, purchase mm. where um, you realize that, you know, okay, and I must I, stop now. <laughs> I can I can buy an expensive bottle of wine anymore. Yeah. You know, um, I need I need to go a bit lower. Yeah. But like also, it, it's about adjusting. Um, in in that you have been saving up up to this point. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not the end. This is just an adjusting of a lifestyle. Exactly. Um, so that you can go back to the saving up. For something else, um, saving up for rainy days, you know, yeah. um, and and that's yeah, that's one of the things that I had to learn once I had moved in. Mm. In that, um, this is you got something out of that. That's a reward um, exactly, out of out of saving, but like the lifestyle of being a saver continues it doesn't end here mm. and you talk about how you were advised and it's great because you had like mentors you had a banker a financial advisor you had mm. people at your disposal who helped you um, yeah. make this goal real right so you also spoke about how they were educating you on credit record yeah um i'm sure in that moment you probably look back and you're like ah, i could have started like years ago exactly and like so what is it exactly that they taught you that you had to then that you wish you knew sooner um it's not that i i wish i knew sooner mm -hmm. but um it, it's a i wish i had planned right to purchase the house sooner mm -hmm. but like also um as a first time buyer especially in, in um i think this is um a few years in, in my it career you know um, where the salary where I started and the salary now are, are way different in mm. that um, I had not ever pictured myself owning a house of this amount, you know, and it, it, it's because of everything that's happening in my life. Um, and it, it's just that, you know, you, you never see yourself that you're going to get there. Um, and I, I wish I had that mentality that um, I'm going to get here mm. one day this is gonna this is gonna be our target mm. even though it, it seems impossible now so that i can i, I could have started shaping up my finances sooner. towards mm. coming here mm. sooner yeah. and i love that you say it's not so much about what you wish you had done physically or you know that yeah. something tangible it's more of a mindset yeah. you wish that your mindset was in line with a goal as great and as big mm. as this yeah that's so amazing because now I'm going to shift my mindset. Uh, we talk about financial literacy all mm. the time. And um, I was reading a case study a few nights ago where they called, where they said South Africa is in a pandemic, which is, which he titled a financial illiteracy because yeah. savings, um, black tax, everything that comes into into play once you do earn a salary right mm -hmm. and being financially literate is extremely important and it's great that a lot of younger people millennials are looking at even starting to build a credit record already um, whether you're having property in mind whether you're having a business or savings in mind credit records are being established amongst yeah. the younger group of people and i want to take it back to a personal experience of yours maybe if you can let us know what was the one biggest lesson coming up to purchasing this home that you've learned about financial literacy um biggest lesson i i think it, it, it's been um you are building up something you know mm. you are not spending mm. um and i think you know when you are creating credit records you know you getting a credit card here and there, you mm -hmm. know, um, you taking a loan for this and that. In, in that it's easier to um, be in that, okay, I have all of these funds available to me now and splash it mm -hmm. and, and ruin your, your record. Um, and for me, that I, I had to be very disciplined in how I was using mm -hmm. um, all this credit that was being available to right. me. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah, you, you have to be disciplined 
in in coming up to that mm. space. Because you, know? you have everything, and you know they always say um, on my show that not all debt is bad debt. Yeah. And that's obviously helped yeah. you get to where you are today. Yeah. And so we've been, we've been discussing home ownership. And I want to talk a little bit about the ups and the downs of purchasing your first home, right? But let's start with the downs because you briefly, just before we started shooting, spoke about how all these fees, all these lawyers, everything that came into play. And I feel like the show, a show like this is so amazing because we can warn people, you know, not to make the same mistakes we yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about mistakes, but of course, mistakes are inevitable, right? And um, you are where you are because of the lessons you've learned and the mistakes mm -hmm. that you made. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, for, for me, I, I think, um, it, it, it's a one, one of, I feel like, it's not a mistake, mm. but I, th I feel like um, I should have taken a breakfast was once I saw something that I wanted, mm -hmm. it was done. Oh. You know, um, I was like, I, I've seen the house that I want to move into. Mm -hmm. that, that's it, you know. Was this a, like a one hit wonder? You mm. saw it and then you were like. Yeah, um, wow. I, I came here, um, I came and, and I was like, this is it um but before i started everything you know um, i i came for a second revisit just to yes, confirm of my initial feeling mm -hmm. you know and uh, i wish i could have taken a a, a briefer to say okay this is that's what you want um let's look at the financial structure mm -hmm. um are we ready to be in here um are we more also mentally ready okay. for the lifestyle adjustment mm -hmm. you know um in that for, for me that that's one of the things that um i didn't consider i was excited um you know the, everything was so emotional i was like finally i'm buying a home yeah um, not necessarily a mistake but like mm -hmm. it, it, it it's something where um i i feel like i should have done you know mm -hmm. i've seen what i've loved this is what i what i want but like take a step back mm -hmm. to to say um where am i mentally emotionally, emotionally. And, mm. and financially mm. um, i wish i had done that and that's so powerful because a lot of our guests talk about when they step into their first home how they just knew there was something like they just knew yeah. and you had a similar moment right yeah. what was going through your mind like emotionally how do you because i mean we look at property every day we go visit different properties and I've never been emotionally attached to anything, to a, a property. So how, what was it for Bokang where you just knew that emotion? What was it? Um, so, so when I first came here, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, coming from, um, I, I had a very nice but compact apartment, you know, mm -hmm. and when I came into this space, you know, it, 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 it has this oldish, but modern feeling, yeah. um, but it's also so open, um, and also you know um, the the views from the balconies. Mm. You know, um, I got to have a chat um, with the real estate agent upstairs by the by the balcony mm. where you know everything was so peaceful. It was quiet, and me being the introvert that I am, yeah. and looking at the space. Um, the peace, that the, the serenity, the property comes with, you know, it was, it's not, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Because I had seen other properties before. I have been, I had been um, in other spaces of where I, I was looking, mm. but like, yeah, it, it was never, like it, this. it never reached out. Right. Yeah. And this one just spoke to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, we spoke about the lawyers and the levies and all these, because we're still busy. You, mm. Like you said, it wasn't a mistake. Um, but of course, there were downs in this moment. And you spoke about furnishing your yeah. apartment. And I like in your bio how you said um, that, of course, you said your apartment before this was compact. It was nice. It was, you yeah. know, and now this is a much bigger apartment. And... Um, why is it that the furnishing part of it like gave you such a shock as well as the lawyers fees and the levies that had to be paid um so, so what um i i, I realized is that i had been preparing um 
to see that um this i will have enough do i have enough can i afford the property mm. you know can i afford the lawyers and then the ladies and all of that you know um i was preparing to buy mm. i was not preparing to move in oh, okay. and and that's what hit me mm. in it because i was in a compact very nice space you know yeah. um i thought everything it, it's here um i'll just move in yeah then you move in and and you realize where you used to live it's a quarter of yeah. what you have it's now right. then um also it, it, it goes so that also goes back to finishing mm. um where um it impacts also the, the savings you know um because you are like okay I, i've saved enough for for here and there yeah. so i can buy one two three but then it hits you that um the rainy day this is not the rainy day mm. you cannot go and spudge the rainy day to fill the space up exactly. you know um also you just bought something and you made a 20 30 year commitment mm. and that why are you rushing to fill it up right you're gonna you, you've made a commitment for more than right. 20 years um take your time mm. you know um but but like yeah moving in it, it yeah and and having to finish it it, mm. it it was i had prepared for everything for <laughs> buying it yeah i had not prepared for moving Filling in. it yeah because you said it was like a reality check for yeah. you being here in this space and so i've asked you what it means to own a home mm. right and i know you're a man of many words but i want to ask you because i've asked i always ask my guests this question is what does the word home mean for you um it it means belonging you finally have a space where one it belongs to you also you belong to it mm. you know um it's your it's your your haven um it, it's your castle you know your your safe space um is that that's why we call it home and not a house right um it because it, it it's about the emotional and, and mental um benefits and rewards mm -hmm. that comes with it you know exactly yeah. and that you kind of have like a relationship with this thing called home you know you're in this together yeah i want to say congratulations to you firstly because you've only been here for five six months and it is a big step and it's absolutely amazing mm -hmm. and your home coming in it felt like a home so congrats thank you <laughs> just before we end off i want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the poems that you wrote in your book hey mm -hmm. And I'd really love for you to share that with us, if possible. Yeah, um, and and like and I say, yeah. hey, what was written um, after we went into lockdown, into hard uh -huh. hard lockdown? Um, um, I think it's one of my fastest written books. Oh really? And it it had the greatest reaction um, because I was not just the only person feeling, feeling that, way, the, yeah. that, that way and me putting it in the book i didn't know that people were gonna react that way to right. it but like um once I, I got it out it was like we feel the same way yeah. especially being in a lockdown you cannot visit um home anymore mm. um people cannot visit you anymore you cannot go to work anymore exactly. you have to work from home Isolated, you are confined. yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you for the context because what this piece really stood out to me. Yeah. Even though it's not lockdown, it still really stood out to me. It's yeah. something that we don't necessarily need a pandemic to feel this way. Yeah. And that's what we realized post lockdown. So if you could please share that with us. Yeah. Um, it's, hey, am I still alive? I've lost count of how many days I've been on my own. Some days are just a blur and some days I don't remember at all. What's the date today? Does it even matter? I keep trying to fill up the silence with music TV, and TV, but it's getting to me now. Today I didn't feel alive at all. Today I just existed and I don't even know what that means anymore. I just know that I'm still here. And we are still here. We yeah. are still here. We are still here and we are breathing. We're alive and well. And I like um, today I just existed. For me, I, that moved me. And I want to talk about when Bokang feels like this, when Bokang feels like today I'm just, I'm here, I exist. Um, I don't even know what that means anymore. But 
I just know that I'm still here. Yeah. How do you deal with that when you feel like that? Um, that's why I say, uh, I always say, um, <laughs> that, that's why wine wasn't invented. <laughs> Have a glass of have wine glass when of you wine. feel <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah. Because I think it's not only it's not only about and the, the, this is poetry. Why it's so why I resonate so much with it's because mm. I write myself. But also um, your last part, you end on a happy note. Yes, it sounds like you're unhappy, but you're ending with something positive. Mm. I'm still here, mm. and acknowledging the fact that you are still here. You know, and that's what we need to, as a people, realize that as much as we go through these trials and tribulations, you are here. Mm -hmm. And just about sitting and being in that moment and being present, that this is the reality now. We're isolated, we can't do anything. Well, all we have is music and TV, but yeah. you're here. Yeah, um, and, 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 and um, being a homeowner, a, a first time homeowner, you know, here, when I wrote it and here, now are two different areas mm. um that's why i need to acknowledge that i'm still here because there's movement that there, there, there's progress right and here constantly changes mm. here constantly moves you and also you constantly feed and and you move with here 100 yeah. percent. that is amazing thank you so much Bukang. pleasure Thank you so much to our viewers at home. We've spoken to Bokang Marajelo. And if you want to see more of his work, check out his Twitter, check out his Instagram as well. And um, yeah, guys, get the book. The book is amazing. Thank you. Take care.